chapter 1, verse number 2. Romans chapter 1, verse number 2. I just want to talk to us for a little while today on the subject of holy. Just one word, holy. Let's everybody say the word holy. Holy. Holy, holy is mentioned 611 times in Scripture in 544 verses. God Himself is known as the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. He is called the Holy One numerous times in Scripture. So all Often, Satan has switched the price tags, and some think holiness is only an Old Testament concept, or that it is legalism, or law, or something along that. But really, it is God's majesty and love. It's what separates him from all other beings, is that he is spirit, he is omnipresent, he is omnipotent, and he is holy. And around the throne, it is constantly, in the Old and the New Testament, in Isaiah 6, and also in the book of Revelation, holy, holy, holy emphasizing God's powerful holiness. And we're going to look at some things that are holy and Brother Smith was already mentioning it, that we need to be holy as well. So Romans 1 verse 2 says this which he had commanded, excuse me, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. I'm going to read that one more time. Which he had promised afore by his prophets in the the Holy Scriptures. Let's everybody say the Holy Scriptures. Amen. Let's pray together. Ask God to do everything He wants to do in our midst today. Hallelujah. Let's pray. God, I glorify You. I love You. I worship You, God. God, You're incredible. You're awesome. You're tremendous, God. We bind every demonic spirit, Jesus, that would try to hurt, that would try to hinder, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us all submit ourselves to You. Resist the devil. He shall flee. God, we glorify you, we praise you, we magnify you, we exalt you. In Jesus' name, do your mighty works here today, God. We glorify you, we praise you, we exalt you, God. Hallelujah. You're incredible. You're great and greatly to be praised, God. Hallelujah. In the city of our God, in the mountain of your holiness, God. Beautiful for situation. The joy of the whole earth. The city of the great King. We glorify you. Why don't we just praise that holy name. Hallelujah. We praise your name, Jesus. We love you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. And why don't you turn to a neighbor right now and just say, God is holy. God is holy. And you can be seated in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So God is holy. God is truth. God is love. God is all of these things. And they are not mutually exclusive terms. God, by his power, by his anointing, by his truth, makes people free. God is still seeking and saving that which was lost, even in this generation. Generation. There's still great revival to be had in this generation. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. So in the book of Romans, we read one of the things that is holy. And the term holy comes from a... Old Testament word, kadash, New Testament word in Greek, it is hageo. And it merely means separate. It is something that is separate. And so God is holy. That means God is not a man that he should lie. God became a man in Jesus Christ for the salvation of sins. But he is not a man that he should lie. He is holy. And he is the author and source of all holiness. You cannot be holy without a holy God. God in your life. Now, the book we read out of already this morning, multiple times, Romans 1 2, which he had promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The Bible is unlike any other book. It is holy and it is a separate book from other books. Amen. It deserves to be treated with respect. You don't uh, pile a bunch of junk on your Bible and, and uh, just uh, say it, it deserves to be honored. If you were in a synagogue today, the holiest thing in the synagogue is the Torah scroll. And it is placed in what's known as the Torah Ark, like the Ark of the Covenant. 
and it is always facing towards Jerusalem in its storage. Josephus said of the Bible that the Jews would rather die than to change one letter in the Bible. The New Testament, we know with the New Testament having a higher law that the New Testament authors and the people who transcribed and copied and passed it around had the same exacting standards as the Old Testament. They would not change one word. That's the reason you and I can trust our Bibles today. It is the worldwide bestseller. It is sold somewhere probably about 7.9 billion copies over the course of time. It is continually the worldwide bestseller. Over 100 million Bibles, according to The Economist magazine, are sold or passed out every year in the world. In the United States, States, about 21 million Bibles are sold or given away in the United States. The average person in the United States, the average Christian, has nine Bibles in the United States and is wanting more. 92% of every person in the United States has at least one Bible. And they say two-thirds of those that have a Bible say the Bible has the meaning of life in it. And so it is a holy book. Spurgeon, the great preacher of the 19th century, would walk to the pulpit and bow to his Bible. We are to reverence the Holy Scriptures. In Psalm 119 and 48, the Bible says, we're to lift up our hands to his commandments. In Psalm 56 verses 4 and 10, it says we are to praise his word. In Revelation 19, when Jesus comes back, it says he has a name written, the word of God. In the book of Psalms, it says he's exalted his word above all his name. So church, the Bible is not just a book. It has not been disproven. It is not something that is on dusty shelves. It is not a book of mythology. It is not a book that just describes ancient Sumerian legends that are actually more accurate than the Bible, the skeptic would say. But the Bible is a living book. It's a life transforming book. It is the power of God into salvation because within it, it contains the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's where we learn the creation of the world. It's where we learn about Noah's Ark. It's where we learn about Moses, Abraham, Noah. It's where we learn about David. It's where we learn about the beautiful Psalms, the 23rd Psalms. It's where we hear about the wisdom of Solomon, the righteousness of Hezekiah and Josiah, the taking into captivity of the people of Israel in 586, the people of, of uh, the northern kingdom in 722 by the Assyrians. It is where we hear about John the Baptist thundering in the wilderness. It's where we read about Jesus Christ being a friend of sinners, publicans, the little children coming unto him. It's where we read about him taking our sins upon us and being whipped and beaten and crucified and dying and three days later raising his own body from the dead, having victory over death, hell and the grave and the devil. Hallelujah. He won it all at the resurrection. It's where we learn about the power and anointing of the Christian life, that it's for whosoever will. And it's where we read about a great holy eternity we're going to be talking about in just a few moments. That beautiful holy city that God has prepared for those that love him. I'm talking about the scriptures. You need to pray it daily. You need to read it daily. You need to make it a point in your day. If you don't get anything else accomplished in your day, if you pray and read the Bible, you've had a good day. Amen. Don't think if you've cleaned your kitchen and you don't pray and read the Bible, you've had a good day. You didn't. Don't think if you went to work and, and things went good, but you didn't pray and read your Bible, you had a good day. Friend, we get cleansing. We're washed by the water of the Word of God. It reads us as we read it. Nothing is hid from the eyes of Him with whom we have to do. Friend, I'm telling you, you better get right with the Word of God. 
The Word of God, it cleanses us now. It saves us now. And in the judgment, the books are going to be opened is going to judge you in the hereafter. You're going to be judged by the contents of this holy book. So it is a holy book. It is not uh, Homer's Iliad. It is not Homer's Odyssey. It's not the wisdom of Socrates. It's not the Republic of Plato. It's not Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. It's not the writings of Julius Caesar. It's not the writings of Augustine, the city of God. It's not the writings of the Summa Theologia of Thomas Aquinas. It is so far beyond any of those things. It's not even worthy to be compared because it's the creator being compared to the creation. Oh, yeah. And as the heavens are high above the earth. Yeah. Hallelujah. So is his ways above our ways. His thoughts above our thoughts. His word will accomplish that where until he sent it. Yeah. And uh, he gives seed to the sower. The word of God is seed. It is a sword. It is a hammer. And it is a fire shut up in your bones yeah. when you let it. So fall in love with the Bible. So the Bible, the first thing is holy. Let's everybody say holy. 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 The scriptures are holy. Aren't you glad for the Bible? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Holy. Sister Walter and I, we were in Roses in Douglas the other day. It was my daddy's birthday. He's passed away. We were just over visiting the grave. Went in Roses, and they had one of the best Bibles you can get. Giant print center column reference. It was $12 and some change. Can you imagine? There's people by the billions around the world never even heard about the Bible. And if they have heard about the Bible, can't get their hands on the Bible because it's illegal. Yeah. In many dozens of countries around the world. And you can go to Roses and pick up a Bible. Family Dollar sells a Bible for 10 bucks. It is absolutely fantastic. Publix has a whole round thing full of Christian books and Bibles. You walk to the back of CVS Pharmacy. They've got a little round thing that's got Bibles in it. Man, grab it. Hallelujah. They're closing down Christian bookstores. Lifeway closed down. Zondervan Family Christian. That wasn't just here. This was all across America. Bereans closed down where I used to work and all that. You need to grab hold of the Bible. Get it while you can. Because there are forces at work trying to make the Bible illegal even in the United States of America. The Bible is a politically incorrect document but it is a God correct document. The Bible defines morals. The Bible defines truth. Not any things of this world. Certainly not our politicians and certainly not lost academicians and certainly not people that uh, have different things on their mind. The, a great education has come by the Word of God. Just believe the Word of God. Believe every word and every letter is true. God inspired it at the beginning and then God preserved it from the beginning. And archaeology shows it. We started a little podcast several months ago, Biblical Archaeology Today with Pastor Steve Walder. And I was really trying to start some other podcast. Actually, and, and Anchor only lets you do one and I'm so terrible technologically that's the one I decided to roll with so we've gotten over 400 I think little episodes on their podcast try to do one a day kind of thing and friend I'm going to tell you the Bible is a hundred percent true yeah. if you listen to that podcast in two or three weeks if you do a journal or a notebook you will have a power packed evidentiary library of reasons the Bible is true and some of the people with multiple PhD in the world that try to say the Bible's not true, they are not acquainted with the evidence that the Bible's true. I'm glad that we can have a firm foundation. It is a rock. Yeah. Hallelujah. The rock of Holy Scripture. Look, the Bible freed the slaves. It elevated the status of women. It brought uh, people together of every ethnicity and culture uh, from all time. There's one plan of salvation by one person. There can be no racism in the body of Christ because nobody's superior. We're all saved by one person, Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, if you want to get down to it, he was God, but he was also a Jewish man. But then he had in his lineage, he had Boaz, he had Rahab, the harlot, he had Ruth, the Moabitess in his lineage. He had David, who was an adult. He had all of these imperfect people in his lineage. But when it came time for God to go into Mary's womb, and to especially create a DNA 
He had Mary's DNA, which was sinful. It, she was not immaculately conceived. Mary doesn't have the, she, she doesn't come from an immaculately uh, lineage. But God, through his holiness, see God, when he touched things, he didn't become unclean. If we touched a leper, we became unclean. When Jesus touched the leper, he cleansed the leper. And so when he touched that strand of DNA in Mary, because it takes a strand of a man's DNA and a woman's DNA to make a child, a man and a woman, to make a child. When he touched that, he cleansed Mary's DNA. And so the DNA he had, it was totally sinless. And Jesus Christ was without sin. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I'm thankful for that. And it's because of his sinless sacrifice. So the Bible tells about all that. Why don't we just glorify God for his holy word? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Romans 7, 12, we read something else is holy. It says, wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Friend, I'm here to tell you today, the word of God is holy, but also the commandments in the word of God is holy. Now, if you're not saved, you can try to keep every command in the book and you're still going to be lost because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and uh, his gulf of righteousness is so great. You can give to the poor. You can try not to sin. You can try not to lie, not to steal, not to cheat. You can guard your eyes. You can guard your heart with all diligence. But one sin separates you from God and all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so you can do every good thing and still go to hell. There's that old saying that's true. Good people go to hell. Where do good people? Good people go to hell. Saved people go to heaven. Man, come on. Saved people go to heaven. You must be born again. We were born in sin, shaping in iniquity, but we must be born again of water and spirit. We've got to repent. That's like a baby turning in the birth canal ready to come out. We're turning from Mother Earth and saying, God, I want you. That's what repentance means is to turn. You ask God to forgive you. And then the water breaks. That's going down in water baptism in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Because your old name's full of sin, you've got to have a new name. And now it's no longer longer Steve Waldron or Stephen Barry Waldron. It's Stephen Barry Waldron Jesus because I'm in the family of God. Hallelujah. And then once the water breaks and I come out and I'm sitting there, I'm still attached to the earth. It's not done yet. If I stay in that position, I'm going to die. The cord has to get cut and uh, we have to have some people praying with us around the altar. That's kind of a joke there. It makes us cry a little bit and we start saying some stuff. We start speaking some stuff. Hallelujah for the first time in our life. And that's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Before then, we only had animals amniotic fluid. After that, we're breathing air. Hallelujah. We're breathing the wind of God. So it takes repentance. Water baptism in Jesus' name. Reception of the Holy Ghost to be born again just like it takes the baby turning, the water breaking, and coming out in the umbilical cord getting cut to be born the first time. God gave us that typology. Hallelujah. Don't just turn and stay in the womb. You've got to come on through the Bible. Notice there's only one way that baby comes into the world. There's only one way for you to be saved. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And so once you and I are saved, then God lives through us. You can't get saved and then want to keep living in sin. You can't get saved and want to keep being a whore dog. You can't get saved and want to keep doing all these terrible things. You get saved from those things. If you sin, you have an advocate with the Father. Not when you sin. God gave you and I the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not just about miracles. It's not just pulling people up out of wheelchairs. It's Living above sin. The law is holy. The commandment is holy. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verses 6 through 8. We see this. God said this. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom. 
and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear of these statutes and say surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people for what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for and what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day church I'm here to tell you the separation message we have is the salt and light to this dark world you'll never win the world by being like the world you might draw a crowd you might fill up a building you might go to multiple services but you won't win the world because what separates us is our holiness. We're kind, we're loving, we're sweet, we have Jesus living through us. We don't dress like the world, we don't talk like the world, we don't have the affections the world has. We are totally separate from this world. We don't get all gaga about the new Hollywood vomit that comes out. We sit there and say, I'm going to spend instead of that three hours, I, I might as well just spend that three hours in prayer and Bible reading or something thing like that. We're not all going crazy because somebody went to the Super Bowl or went to the college football uh, championship game. We get crazy about Jesus. Hallelujah. That he's the savior of our soul. Hallelujah. Set your affections on things above, not on things of this earth. Hallelujah. Church, when you are born again of water and spirit, it is a radical transformation. It is totally radical. You are delivered from the kingdom of darkness, according to Colossians 1, and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. You're no longer like the world. Again, you no longer care about the things. You care about souls. You care about your family. You care about the things of God. You care about intercession. You care about the power of the Holy Ghost. You care about coming to church. You set your, put your priorities in order. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. Don't try to get your house in order before you seek God. Seek God and God will set your house in order as Brother Dan said. John 14, 15, the commandment is holy. The law is holy. John 14, 15, he did not come to do away with the law. He came to fulfill the law so you and I, through the power of the Holy Ghost, could live strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Be a holy people. If you love me, Jesus said, keep my commandments. That's New Testament. If you love Jesus, keep... You, so many people say, well, I love Jesus. No, if you're doing things against God, you don't love Jesus. Okay, let me read it again. If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, you may be fault, you may be struggling, you may have a weight, you may have a sin that does so easily beset you. But if you're sitting there justifying your sin, if you're sitting there wallowing in your sin, and somebody tries to pull you out of your sin, and your first reaction is, quit judging me, you don't love God. Because if you loved God, you'd want to be holy like God, because God is seeking fellowship of holiness. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And this know in the last days, people are going to have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. They're going to be ever learning, but never coming to the truth. Well, let me just do this Bible study. Let me just break down the Bible like this. Let me just do this, that, and the other. Friend, all that's great, wonderful, and good, but knowledge of the Bible without application of the Bible is not going to do you any good. If there was a pill that would cure you from every disease that would ever come on you you could know everything about that pill but until you took the pill it was not going to do you any good that's the way the word of God is you can know the word of God backwards forwards up down sideways Greek Hebrew Latin Aramaic and every language known to man but unless you're born again you can't enter the kingdom of God you can't see the kingdom of God why don't we just give glory to Jesus he's good. Oh, yeah. 
Hallelujah. It's the end time. Get on in. Get on in. It's the end time. Don't stand on the outside of the ark. You got to be in the ark to be saved. You can't dance on top of the ark. You can't see how solid the ark is. You got to get in the ark. So the law is holy. The commandment is holy. The Holy Scripture is holy. And then we come to Romans chapter 12, verse number 1. We see something else that is holy as well that's already been mentioned by Brother Smith. Appreciate these good brothers are following in the Holy Ghost. 12.1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Your body is holy. He's coming back for a people whose spirit, soul, and body are sanctified, are set apart, are holy. Your body is holy. Be careful what you do with your body. Your body was dedicated for one man and one woman in a covenant of marriage for one lifetime. Marriage outside the, uh, excuse me, sexual relations outside the marriage covenant is sin. You are defiling your body. It is not something unique to the United States of America as you read the epistles, you find Paul constantly had to confront that sin. If you're married and you're flirting with people that are not your spouse, that is sin. Keep your body holy. Don't just put on anything. Don't just wear something to attract member of the opposite sex or to turn heads because your body is holy and that is bringing flesh. All that is in the world, the lust of the flesh flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life, are not of God, but are of the world. Come on. Hallelujah. So your body is holy. God created your body holy. Yeah. 1 Thessalonians 4, 4, if you're dating, you only date people in church. And if that person in church says, well, we need to see if we're compatible, let's do this. You need to ditch them because they're not holy enough for you. Yeah. Your goal is to make heaven. Your goal is to make the holy city and to fulfill the will of God and not to be burdened down with baggage of people that aren't on fire for God like you are. Because once you make the covenant, then everything changes and then you are tied to that person for the rest of your life regardless if they love God or not. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 4 says that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. That is your body in holiness. Possess your body in holiness. Be careful what comes through your eyes. Young people, children, we have dealt with instances of nine-year-olds, nine-year-old girls being addicted to pornography. Nine-year-old girls being addicted to pornography. Your body is holy. You've got to understand that. You can't just sit there and play video games where you murder 20,000 people every day and probably keep a great sense of holiness in your body. You've got the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. You are surrounded with holy angels. When we do things that are unholy, don't be surprised when that holy stuff turns its back on you and even leaves you. We do not believe in what saved always saved. The reason we don't believe it is because it's not in the Bible. You can be lost. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 says, What? Know ye not? Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Now, when Paul was writing that, standing was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Herod's temple at Jerusalem. In some lists, not in every list, but in some lists, it was absolutely amazing. When they built the temple of Herod, they built it out of limestone quarries. It's called Maliki Stone. And they built it out of limestone quarries underneath Jerusalem, Zedekiah's cave. It's fascinating. It's very, uh, believe it or not, holy to Freemasons, Zedekiah's cave is. I won't even go into all that. But when you bring it out, it's white. But once the sun hits it, it bakes it and becomes yellow. And so then, when the sun hits it every day, it shimmers like gold. 
And that's the reason historians of the day said when you looked at Jerusalem, they called Jerusalem the city of gold because it shimmered like gold. I find that so fascinating because the holy city, the New Jerusalem, is made out of gold. But it is clear, transparent gold. Yes. The reason it is clear, transparent gold, where gold gets its color from, is from its impurities. But when you get totally pure gold, pure gold is transparent. Yeah. So you had the city of gold here that relates to Jerusalem, which is up above, the mother of us all. But that new Jerusalem is pure gold. There's no sin there. Don't think you're going to make it sin in a little bit every day. Hey, don't get your theology by little colloquialisms and sayings on Facebook. Everybody sins a little bit every day. They don't sin a little bit every day if you've got the power of the Holy Ghost. If you are, there's mercy and grace for you. Don't get me wrong. Jesus Jesus loves you. He cares for you. You can repent. You can be saved. But don't you always need to let your sin be exceedingly sinful. There's a difference between long-suffering and compromise. Long-suffering says the standard is here, but I'm going to be long-suffering till you reach that. That's a fruit of the Spirit. Compromise says, well, nobody can live that, so the standard's down here. Everybody just sin. Sin is never acceptable with God. Can you say amen? So the temple of the Holy Ghost. So we are fearfully and wonderfully made. If you ever think about your body just a little bit, all the hundred trillion DNA that I think they say if you unstrand all the DNA in your body, it goes to the moon and back or something. Some may, you can look those statistics up. And uh, just how everything, all, you've got six miles of arteries and capillaries and maybe probably more than that in you and, and all of these things and you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. The reason you were created, you're in the image of God. Yeah. And you were created to receive the Holy Ghost. Everybody is in the image of God. They deserve our respect. And they were all created to receive the Holy Ghost. Your body is the temple of God. You could not take impure things into the temple. That's the reason Jesus drove out the money changers and those things out of the temple. Because it was a type of the temple in, in heaven. It had to be sinless. It could not have sin in there. So he had to drive it out. His house would be called a house of prayer. Synagogues are known as a house of prayer. He said, my house, claiming he's the he was saying, I'm the glory of God behind that veil. Yeah. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer yeah. amongst all nations. He said, this is my house. Y'all yeah. built it to me. Uh, oh yeah. Jehovah salvation. Yeah. My house shall be a house of prayer. So your house is supposed to be holy because it was made for the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Don't follow Again, world religions, pagan religions, things off Parisian runways, New York City ads. Don't follow. Don't get your styles from them. Get your styles from the Word of God. Your, the Bible tells you how to dress and it tells you and I how to look. It says, be modest. Yes. Lord. A meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is of great price. Modest means long and loose. Some people can get the long part right, they don't get the loose part right. Other people, they get the loose part right, but they don't get the long part right. Some people don't get any of it right. Hallelujah. But God loves us. He cares for us. He's wanting us to get it right. In the name of Jesus. Holy. Let's everybody say the word holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So your body, be careful about your body. Be careful, don't cut. The reason Satan wants you to cut yourself. The Bible talks about that. 1 Corinthians, abusers of their selves with mankind. That's talking about that and many other things in that scripture, in that one phraseology as well. But be careful with your body. Be careful with your body. And uh, even gluttony, overeating. Be careful with your body. But on the other side, anorexia. And 
and starving yourself to try to look like something. Don't, don't do that. Be careful about your body. Be careful about what you put on, inking your body and all of these type things. I'm not condemning anybody that's already done that. I'm not saying anything about that. But gracefully consider that in the future that you could take that hundreds of dollars that you're using to hurt the temple of God and bleed for all this. You know, the reason it said um, Egyptian women wore earrings is because they wanted to show they were willing to bleed for beauty. This was 4,000 years ago. You're bleeding for all this kind of stuff. Look, your body is holy. It belongs to Jesus. Don't do those things. Yeah. Hallelujah. You spend that money. The minute you get an inclination, well, I guess I'm going to do that. Then say, I'm going to give if it's $200, $300, $400. Some people say it's $800. I don't know. I've never got a tattoo. I don't know how much they cost. I hear they're really expensive. Just say, okay, I'm going to write that to a missionary pastor. Here's however much $200. Give that to missions, foreign missions. Come on. Hallelujah. Not for vanity. My goodness gracious. God's good. Aren't you glad for the truth? Hallelujah. Praise God. People say, I can't believe you're preaching like that. I can't believe people go to churches where they don't preach like this. What are they believing? I, we've got to preach the Bible. Not some little philosophy of man. All right. For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Nothing is uglier than somebody trying to glorify God in their body, but has a nasty, dirty spirit about them. It gives a bad name to Christianity. So the winning combination is to glorify God in your spirit, have a great attitude, bear the fruit of the spirit, and in your body. Because God purchased it all with the precious blood. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 says, Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? The Spirit of God. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. If you defile, for the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are. Oh, yeah. Be extremely careful with the temple of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. So in closing tonight, in Revelation twenty two nineteen, we find that we're going to live forever in the holy city. Let me just read that. I'm going to read just a few scriptures in closing. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them that keep the sayings of this book, worship God. And then verse 19, And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city for the things that are written in this book. 22 and 11 says, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. Basically he's saying, if you can read the book of Revelation and not be converted, then there's really no hope for you. Right. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Oh, yeah. Revelation 22, 6. And he said unto me, These things are faithful and true. The Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Church, there are false prophets out there as well. Not all prophets are holy. Not everybody that prophesies of you is, is of God. And... Uh, one of the scourges of the end time is false prophets. The Bible says evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse being deceived. God willing, Wednesday night, I'm going to teach them why it's so bad to lie in the gifts of the Spirit. Because it looses lies into a life and into a congregation. And it's horrible. So I believe in the gifts of the Spirit, but you don't have to lie to be in the gifts of the Spirit. Can you say amen? amen. 26. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. That's what I want to go in. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God unto God and of Christ. Hallelujah. 1820. It says this, holiness, rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. So be looking for holiness. If somebody claims to be a prophet and they're not holy, then you know they're not. 1410. Revelation 14.10 says the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture in the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented in the 
uh, with fire and brimstone, the presence of the holy angels, and the presence of the Lamb. All angels are holy. And since the angel of the Lord encamps round about those who fear Him, then you and I must be holy. If not, we are in danger of losing our angel protection. Jude 20 says, Praying in the Holy, uh, holy Ghost, building up yourself in your most holy faith. Acts 2.38, oneness, holiness, the apostolic doctrine is a holy faith. It is not a worldly doctrine. It's not a doctrine of devils. It's not a doctrine of men. It is a holy faith. Few more scriptures. First Peter 1 verses 15 and 16 but as he which hath called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation conversation is lifestyle but that includes your your tongue because it is written be ye holy for I am holy God is the standard we're supposed to be holy like he is yeah. 2 5 ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ you're part of a holy priesthood now Levitical ironic priesthood hallelujah chapter 3 verse number 5 talks about holy women of old. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Women, we need you to be holy. Men, you've got to be holy too. We've got to lead the charge. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. For the prophets became not in old time by the will of man. This is how did we get the Bible. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That's how Scripture came, was holy men of God. We're in the end time. Unholiness surrounds us. We're in a wicked culture. So were the apostles. And the apostles shined as light in the world. I want to encourage you as a church to stay separate from the world. Don't get drowned. Don't let the world fit you into its mold. Dare to be different. Dare to be countercultural. Dare to be what God has called you to be in the Word of God. It's been said that the world doesn't quite know yet what what would happen when somebody gives themselves fully to Jesus Christ? Why don't we be the generation that finds that out and submits to God, yields to God, resists the devil and he shall flee. I'm believing God for great end time revival but it's going to come through a holiness church. This church, if God tarries, this church, you just watch one day, God willing to be the biggest church around because it's holy. It's not given into the world. It's not trying to attract people. That only lasts so long and then people are like ah they get tired of it when the miracles start happening when the things start happening people want real people want what is true hallelujah and don't tell me that it keeps people from living for God one of the fastest growing religions in the world is Islam and it's got over a billion adherents and man women have to wear burqas and have to cover their face up to here and they say in the United Kingdom um women are converting to Islam because they're saying we just wanted somebody to tell us what we were to do to please God. Hallelujah. So don't ever think holiness is a negative. It's a positive. Holiness in spirit and holiness in body. Why don't we pray together? Hallelujah. God, I glorify you. I love you, Lord Jesus Christ. God, I ask you to bind every demonic spirit. Try to attack your wonderful people. Let us be strong in you and the power of your might, God. In Jesus' name, without holiness no man shall see the Lord. God, that one word, holy. What a word. Hallelujah. Your name is holy. And when we use your name, when we're holy, amazing things happen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Why don't we just glorify the Lord right now? God is good. Yeah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.